Hey guys, welcome back for another Twisted Tale review. This time I'm going to be talking about Reflection by Elizabeth Lim. This is the fourth book in the Twisted Tale series. It's not a sequential series. Each one is self-contained, but this is the fourth one that came out. This one came out in 2018 and it is the first one written by Elizabeth Lim in the series. Now, if you've noticed, my channel has some other reviews and rankings, including this book. I have read them all before. You can see them on my wall here, on the shelf, rather. And I'm anxiously waiting the next one, which at this point in time is When You Wish Upon a Star, which is the Blue Fairy from Pinocchio's story. Very curious what they're planning to do with that. So the premise for Reflection is, what if Mulan had to travel to the underworld? So it takes place, if you're familiar with the animated Disney movie, where the uh, Shang and the army are ready to face Shen Yu at the mountain and Mulan causes the avalanche. Now things twist there because Mulan does cause the avalanche, but when Shen Yu comes in to attack her, Shang actually jumps in, getting very, uh, actually mortally wounded from that. Things from there are pretty much similar until the battle is over and they're like, oh shoot, like Shang is dying. Mulan as Ping is put in charge of taking care of Shang and while they're on their way back to the Imperial City, she is taking care of him overnight and she thinks she has a dream, but it's actually Li Shang's father visits them as a ghost and you know, he's feeling guilty that his son has died and Mulan being able to see that he's a ghost kind of volunteers herself to bring him back from the underworld, which starts the whole journey there. I am going to do a brief summary, which will contain minor spoilers, but I want to kind of get through things just to like give you what the story feels like before I go into details about characters and things I liked and didn't like. So without further ado, I'm going to read you the blurb. It'll kind of summarize a lot of things that I'm going to say. But this is the non-spoilery blurb for Reflection. Fa Mulan has a warrior's heart. She would do anything to protect her loved ones, including go to war in her ailing father's place disguised as a soldier called Ping. And when the captain of her regiment, Li Shang, takes a grievous blow meant for her, Mulan knows she must do everything she can to help him survive his life-threatening injury even if that means accepting a harrowing mission to the underworld, Diu. King Yama, the ruler of Diu, is not about to make things easy for her. With the help of Shang's great lion guardian, Mulan must traverse the underworld, face near impossible obstacles, and bring Shang back before sunrise, or stay in Diu forever. As if that weren't enough, Mulan is still posing as Ping and grappling with the decision to reveal her true identity especially as she and Shang grow closer. Time is of the essence. Will Mulan be able to save Shang and herself before it's too late? So the blurb gives you a very good idea of what you're going to go through with the story. We have Mulan going through different trials in the underworld in order to bring Shang back from the dead, essentially. And uh, the way that this happens is she approaches King Yama, who is like the keeper of the books and kind of guides where people go once they're dead, if they deserve any punishment, or if they go straight to heaven, if they're reincarnated, etc. He doesn't recognize Mulan as Mulan. So when Mulan announces that she's Ping, he's like, I don't have any records of that, but we don't investigate. The deal is set that if Mulan can get Shang out of Diu by sunrise, mind you, we're already like late in the evening, the moon is out, then they'll both survive, be fine, it's all good. If not, then Shang will be reincarnated as planned and Mulan will be stuck as a demon in the underworld. As we see with other demons is not ideal, not ideal. Rather than being paired with Mushu and Kriki from the movie, Mulan is actually on this journey with Shishi, who is a great stone lion guardian for the Shang family, which is great. It's nice to have new characters, but not gonna lie, I did kind of want the familiarity of Mushu. Obviously, Cricky isn't really like a dialogue character, but I digress. I realized I'm like super close to the camera, so we're just gonna we're just gonna step back. Thankfully, Mulan also has Shang's father on her side. So early in their quest, as they're traversing the different levels of Diu, he does help guide them to where to find Shang. 
who's in the Tower of Forgetfulness, for the Tower of Forgetfulness. The Tower of Forgetfulness. Mulan approaches Shang there, convinces him that they need to get him back and like, yes, it's an honorable thing for soldiers to die, but he needs to come back. They need him. And then things go south. Like literally they go from like the 97th level down to the bottom or like level 27 or something. It was very, very low. They fell down a huge hole. They find themselves in a garden and this garden is very special because it's where Meng Po is, and Meng Po is a recurring character throughout the story who is trying to thwart Mulan and Shang's uh, endeavor here. Meng Po's goal is to give Shang the Tea of Forgetfulness so he will forget about his past life and be able to move on. Obviously, Mulan doesn't want that because we're trying to get him out of DU. From there, not only are they running from demons and ghosts, trying to battle Meng Po whenever she appears, but they go through their own struggles you know, as they're just getting closer and time to get to know each other. And then when Mulan is eventually revealed as a woman, obviously we have that drama that pushes Shang away initially. He does thankfully come back. They handle the last of their trials together and they do make it out of the underworld. Happy ending, similar taste to the way that the romance buds at the end of the movie which was great. I did appreciate swatching that growth and that like awkwardness in Shang. So it did wrap up very nicely. Now all that was a really quick summary, but it really is just a book where Mulan faces trial after trial after trial. There is definitely character buildup and um, relationships going on, but it does have that sort of, here's an action scene and things are happening and we succeed. And now here we have like a little bit of character talk. And then here's another action scene. Nothing wrong with that. It is, it is what it is. It's a trial, a uh, character facing a trial to reach a goal or several trials rather. This being my second read around, I do think I noticed a lot more details than I did the first time regarding like points of the Chinese mythology and stuff that I thought were very interesting. Just the different levels and things that you find throughout DU in the underworld that makes you want to be like, oh, is this like real lore like is this place exist you know exist in the in the mythology so i thought that was very very interesting and we got to see a lot of that obviously we know mulan can kick butt and she does she every time she's faced with a trial she does succeed and overcome it she but she does not do it like unscathed she's not a mary sue just getting in getting out and everybody loves her there are consequences she is injured a lot. She is quite heavily injured by the time she gets through all the trials. In regards to this being a twisted tale, so taking the original story and twisting a part of it to bring us a whole new story, I thought it was very very successful because just not only from having Shang injured and having Mulan have to go to save him in the underworld, but we did get a full story in the underworld itself. So I think it was a very successful as a twisted tale. Now at the end, when they come back and, you know, Shang knows that Mulan or Ping is Mulan at this point and how he deals with that or how he plans to deal with that, we do get to see. But I feel like I wanted a little bit more at the end because they're, they're making their way to the Imperial City and Shang's like, I want them to know that you're a woman and like they should honor you and I'm going to like support you and all that. And you kind of have that like where they remember their time in DU and have the feels, but you don't get the the full, like them actually going out or like saying face to face, I will start courting you or something. Um, like he does say, hey, can I come like visit your family? Which is the closest we get. But I would have loved if there was an epilogue that maybe glances over just how that went with the emperor and coming back to her family because they talked about it a lot. One of my favorite things about this book was the detail that we get, even from jumping into the middle of the story with Mulan already at the battle against the Mongols, the Huns, the Huns. So she does recap on like how she got into the army, her struggle, you know, leaving her father. We do get all of that, which I appreciate because let's say you didn't see the movie and you happened to pick up this book you get a good enough background to understand what Mulan 
has gone through and who she is as a person. Wanted to see a little bit more of that resolution at the end because she, a lot of her struggle was figuring out who she really is and being confronted with how people might deal with knowing that she is a woman, but we can really only speculate. We can say, oh yeah, it ended up the same way that the movie did and, you know, Emperor honored her, the family is happy, happy and, you know, Shang shows up and it's awkward but happily ever after. We can definitely assume that, but there could be more. Uh, I feel like there was room for more. Like I said, I just kind of wanted a little epilogue or something at the end. It doesn't necessarily decrease the experience, but I, I want, I want some more just to like really place us and see if there was a more lasting effect or like if there was any difference or something that was affected post them leaving the underworld. Now the main characters that I want to talk about are Mulan, Shang, Shishi, and Meng Po since they were the most present throughout the story. I thought Mulan was very true to character. Like I could hear Mulan's voice when Mulan spoke and it was perfectly adapted. Shang, <laughs> um, because he has that whole like, he's the, he's the commander, he's always in charge, but he's, uh, I guess in some ways socially awkward. Like that did come across because he's very like to the point with everything. And then when it like, he starts to address feelings and whatnot, it's like, awkward boy. So Shang, I enjoy that we got to get more out of Shang than we do in the movie. So it made that romance that builds up feel more earned. Uh, she, she as the Lee family guardian, kind of obnoxious at first. And it seems like he keeps claiming that he knows more than maybe he does, especially about the underworld and things don't always go planned as planned. I don't really have much to attribute for his person as a character because it, it kind of just felt like the filler in like, we need somebody to be on Mulan's side, but also to like understand where Shang's coming from. So he felt like a middle character to support both ends and um, eventually kind of reason for himself that his own expectations of being a warrior are not the end all be all. And then Meng Po, rather than King Yama, because King Yama was there at the beginning and there at the end and like, Everything was left to Meng Po. She was a very interesting sort of antagonist with trying to give Shang the tea, then trapping Mulan in an illusion, and then challenging her in the Chamber of Mirrors. And for those who are like more knowledgeable about Asian mythology, like when you see the fox, you're like, don't trust the fox. Don't trust the fox. The fox is sneaky, but Mulan trusts the fox and that's how she ends up in the illusion. But to have that come full circle and Meng Po be like, you bested my trials and you earned the right to come out of DU and kind of raise Mulan up from that. I really liked that part. I don't know how much I believe there was a legend of a warrior who had like a, a sword with the power of the sun. They were famed for like being one of the emperor's best warriors. Mulan had acquired that sword while she was in the underworld. On the sword, it said the, the flower will bloom the strongest in adversity, something to that I'll put the quote up here, but it had the fa from the fa Mulan family sign. So it feels like it should be one of her ancestors swords, but it turns out to be Meng Po's sword. So I was like, is Meng Po an ancestor? or like unrelated, but we decided that Meng Po was not only that warrior, but she was like also a woman warrior who was acknowledged for stuff. I don't really know, like those pieces didn't quite connect as well for me. However, having all of Mulan's struggles be acknowledged and like, you did it, you earned this, you know who you are. Like, it was very satisfying to have Mulan come out at the end, feeling more comfortable and knowing what she wants to do and who she is. Um, we didn't really have like a villain villain. We had the antagonist, so can't really comment much more on that part. The romance, like I said, we got a slow burn with Shang and Mulan, which I don't think you really get feels until more like midway through the book because Mulan has denied it since she's been in the training camp. She starts to notice things about Shang and she's like, maybe I do like him, but I'm, he thinks I'm a boy. Some of the conversations they have though, you're like, are kind of flirty, but at the same time, like Mulan's trying to speak for herself as if she was her own brother. It was a cute way to be like, well, I think you might like my sister, that my sister is me. So I thought that was cute. And then after Shang goes through his pouty pout about Mer, you betrayed me and comes back and realizes 
it may have been a stronger jump than I expected between from pouty pout to actually I care about you and I, I don't want you to get hurt but then you could attribute to that to him really valuing Ping as a friend or Mulan as a friend and like kind of seeing through all of that it developed really well and I and like I said it stayed true to character with Shang kind of being awkward of like can I come visit your family and she's like yeah that'd be great so that's all I can think about for my review of Reflection by Elizabeth Lim if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments below because I'm sure there's other things I could touch on the next one that I picked out is A Whole New World the Aladdin retelling because I already know Jafar has done things and I've decided to suffer through that again. Look forward to the next video. Thanks for watching. Leave any comments below and I'll see you in the next one.